Peeps, welcome back. And I know you already know by the title of this video that I'm going to be teaching you how to play Elden Ring or realistically any game you want with a cockpit set up just like this or really any controller. I'm going to walk you through step by step process. Everything will be timestamped down below so you can skip ahead and go around and see exactly what you want to see. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So we're going to need two pieces of software to make this work. A software program called Anti Micro X, which is very similar to the Anti Micro video that I have made before, but with some nice tweaks and additions to actually make this work very easily. And I'm going to show you how to install it this time, as well as another piece of software called HID Hide. So let's go ahead and start with the Anti Micro X first. So in the description, there's a link to the Anti Micro X GitHub. When you're on this GitHub, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go all the way over to the right and then where you see releases here, you're gonna click on the very first release, which in this case is 3.2.3. .3. After you've clicked that particular link, you're gonna be brought to a new page here. And when you scroll all the way down, you're gonna see assets. This is the assets for the release of, in this case, the 3.2.3. .3. If you're on Windows, you're gonna be looking for this .exe executable file. And if you're on Linux, I assume you know far more than I do about about this type of stuff. So uh, continue doing what you're gonna do. So for Windows users, go ahead and click the .exe and that's gonna go ahead and start the download. From there, save it to wherever you would like to and we'll come back to that in a second. The second link in the description is for the HID Hide program. You're gonna wanna go over to here and this is made by Nefarious, ooh. But again, you're gonna go over here to the Releases tab, go ahead and click that. And then you're gonna scroll down to you find this HID Hide MSI.MSI. .MSI. Go ahead and click that as well and save that to wherever you want. From there, go ahead and navigate to the folder that you would download those executables too, and go ahead and install each one to whatever location that you would like. The location of this should not matter for the rest of this video here, because once they are installed, we're going to pull up both of them separately, and they're just like any other program you would have on your computer. Once both are installed, let's go ahead and open up Anti Micro X. So inside Anti Micro X, you're going to see any type of controllers that you have plugged in along this top section here. So you can see that I have a Thrustmaster TMX racing wheel. I have some off-brand handbrake. I have some sim pedals, and then I have a T500 RS gear shift, which is what you see right here. Let's start with the wheel as this is probably what most people would have. Or if you have like a DDR pad or like bongos or anything, you can map just about any type of controller using the software. So the tips that I show you here will work across any type of controller that Anti Micro X will understand and be able to read, which is almost any type of HID device. So inside of this, this the wheel thing that I have here, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you how to like find what buttons you have. So if I hit A, you'll see the blue button pop up down here. That means that I'm hitting the button on here that's corresponding with button five in Anti Micro X. So this way here, I can see exactly what type of keys I can press. And if I press more than one, you can see that more things pop up. So if I hit eight buttons, you can see eight things being held. Well, what about the steering wheel itself, right? Because we need to be able to like steer our character. Well, if I take the steering wheel and I start turning it, you'll see that axis one starts going. Well, what about the other way? You'll see that again, axis one is going again. Now, let's go ahead and click into axis one, which in this case is our steering wheel. It could be axis two, three, or four, whatever it is for you. But when you turn this, find the one that's lit up. Go ahead and left click on that. And now you can see in here, there's a little gray bar that's being moved and now it's blue. This is essentially this gray bar. This is the position that the steering wheel is at. So as I go all the way over to my left lock, you can see that it's fully locked all the way over here. If I go all the way to the right, it'll lock all the way to the right. So let's go back to the middle. Okay, well now that we can see which side goes to where, how do we actually map this to something that's usable for a character to you know, essentially steer? Well, we can see as I go left, it goes to the left, as I go to the right, it goes to the right, but we can also see on the left, there's a no key, and on the right, there's a no key. Both of those correspond to the different ways that the axis can be turned. So if I go to the left, I want the keyboard key to be pressed is A. So that means as I go to the left, my character is going to hit the A button and start going to the left. But I got to move this quite a ways to be able to start turning left. And in my character, if I'm doing that in an Elden Ring game, that's going to be a bad time. So what we're going to do is grab the dead zone and we're going to move these all not maybe not probably all the way down because then you have you're always going to be steering one way or the other. But I'm going to put these so that we're at like, I don't know, 1500 is my dead zone. So that way, that's the movement that I have to do on the steering wheel to make myself turn left and then to the right. So I have a little dead zone so I can always go straight. But if I want to then go left and right, I don't have to go that far to actually input left or right. We have the A key being pressed when we go to the left. Now we want the D key being pressed when I go to the right. So go ahead and go to the right hand no key section and hit D. So now I have it when I go left or right, that's what's being hit. And to show that this works here, I just brought up a notepad. And then what I can do is literally just go left, right. And you can see 
that the keyboard is typing in AD, AD, AD. Once you have this set up to the configuration you want, go ahead and hit close. So now from here, we can now go left and right, but we wanna be able to go forward and backwards, right? Now, if you're using a, a steering wheel setup that has like the backs plugged in where your, your pedals go into this, when you press your like throttle brake and if you have a clutch or clutch, it'll light up probably under like axis two, three, four under your steering wheel. But because mine are all separate into separate USB plugs, I can actually see over here where I have SIM pedals on my controllers. If I click this, now I have three more fully separate separate buttons and we can see that all three are being lit up as I press them. So if I press the throttle, axis one lights up. So I want my throttle to be W so I can go forward, right? So press the gas, you go forward. So I click this and I can see here that as I push this down, that bar lights up all the way till I bottom it out. So I want this key here to be W. So as I press it down, W is hit. Now again, I want the dead zone further back so that way I don't have to press it as far so I get more instant reactions, especially in a game like Elden Ring where you want quick reaction times, this is what you want. Now, one thing of note here is that some pedals actually have uh, what's called a combined throttle brake. So you see here where I have positive throttle. I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. Do you see here where it says positive throttle? If this is set to normal, do you see how now I have, again, kind of like the steering wheel where I have a left and right one? If I start to press this pedal, do you see how one side's fully lit? My foot's not on the pedal at all, it's fully off. So if I wanna hold this in the middle, I'd have to, like if I wanted nothing to happen, I'd have to hold the, the pedal perfectly in the middle of its placement. And this is for like some, some pedal setups only have one pedal to do both gas and brake. So if you're all the way on, you're all the way gas. If you're all the way off, you're all the way brake. One of the ways you can get around this is if you change this normal part here to one of these other throttles, whether it's a negative throttle or a positive throttle, this can help you get away from having to this weird like middle zone thing. So in our case, I'll go to positive throttle. And then as I push this throttle all the way down, it only goes one direction and it doesn't back off into this other, you know, keyed zone. So just a way that you can get around some stuff if it pops up. All right, so now we have W being pressed when we hit the throttle and I want the brake to essentially be reversed. So if I go down to axis three here, I can see once again, that is my brake pedal. I'm gonna move the dead zone further down so it's a quicker reaction. Go ahead and click no key and hit S. So now I have forward, backwards, left and right. Now in a game like Elden Ring, I wanna be able to dodge roll. So you can either map dodge roll to something on your steering wheel. In this case, I'm gonna actually map it to my clutch, which is my third pedal. For those that might not drive a manual vehicle, there's three pedals. The farthest to the left is the clutch. So in this case, it's axis two right here. So if I click this, that's happening there. And I want this to be a pretty quick reaction. And I believe in Elden Ring, that's space. So I'm gonna go ahead and click space. And now I've got space, W and S. So now I can move, run and dodge roll, but I wanna be able to attack. So let's go back to my steering wheel here. So I have some paddle shifters on the back, as you can see, and probably here, right here. So I want my right paddle shift to be left click because that is what I want to use to attack. Go ahead and pull that right one. This is button two. I want that to be left click. So for a mouse input on here, you can only see keyboards. You want to go down to the mouse tab that's over here. And here you can see all sorts of different mouse things. But what we want it to be is left button, where you see right here, left button, middle button, right button. You want it to be left button. So I'll go ahead and click left button. We have a left clicked map now, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit close. Be careful testing these, by the way, because these will just like click stuff. But now we can see that that's my left mouse button. So if I want to map block to my left paddle shift here, I can go back up to this button. Now remember, we mapped the left click button to this right paddle shift. So if you watch, if I click just this, it'll pull it up because it's now acting as a keyboard. And this is how it works inside of games. So in this case, I wanna to go to my mouse and I wanna use this as right button because that's what block is in Elden Ring. So I have right click on the mouse and I have left click on the mouse. So now that you have kind of some of the basics here of just setting up the buttons, I'm gonna show you how to do some mouse stuff so you can actually like move your camera because that's kind of important in this game. I have some uh, shoulder buttons that I can use on this here, uh, which are my two outside bottom buttons. I want my button 12 here to be like move the the mouse to the right so that way it kind of like pans my camera. So if I go to button 12 here, I'm gonna once again go to mouse because I know in Elden Ring, the mouse is what pans the camera. So I'm gonna go to mouse and I'm gonna set it to right, which means move the mouse to the right. So I'll click that and I'm gonna go down to mouse settings because I want this to be a little bit faster than like a really slow pan. So here you can see horizontal speed and vertical speed, and I'm just gonna have these changed together because there's no reason to have them separately in this case, because I'm only doing a horizontal pan. And I'm gonna bump this up to like 200. The other thing I'm gonna do as well is instead of enhanced precision up here in acceleration, I want this to be linear. I want it that the second I hit the button, it immediately moves. But if you want it to be kind of a gradual increase to the full speed, you can change your different types of accelerations in 
in here. Uh, I just like linear because it just makes things a little bit easier, especially like I said, in Elden Ring where you might want more quicker reactions. That now allows for the mouse to move to the right. So if I zoom in on my mouse here, you can see as I click this button, <laughs> my mouse goes flying across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> let me zoom back out. If you follow that mouse there, once again, you can see it just kind of shoot across the screen. And that's good. Now let's go ahead and do to the left. So once again, I'll click that button so I know which it is. And that's, and that's button four. I'll click that, go to mouse, click left. Sometimes you might have to click it twice for the mouse settings to pop up. Click mouse settings and again, change together. And I want this again to be 200. Once you've changed that, go ahead and hit close and hit close. So now if I put this just right in the center here, I can now move my mouse back and forth using the buttons on my wheel. So from here, go ahead and finish setting up your controller, whatever that is, to have the buttons that you want to play the game that you want. And like I said, in my case, we're playing Elden Ring, but in your case, it could be anything you want it to be. Go ahead and finish that setup. And then we'll come back here and I'll show you a few more tips that you can use. All right. So in this case, here I have a finished setup. I don't know why my axis two through four decided to suddenly click on. Nothing's being pressed, so they're just there for some reason. So we'll just let that go for now. But I have everything mapped in here that is useful, at least on this. So now here's a couple tips for you. So on my shifter, which is over here, you can see that I have mouse up, mouse down. You can also see that I have this E comma down. Well, what is that? It's actually a combined task. So you know in Elden Ring, when you hold the use button, and then you can use the D-pad to select one of your quick selects. That's what this is doing. So in here, if you actually go down to advanced, you can see that we have something called assignments and you can see E and then down and then a time of like 0.1 seconds. So to make something like this, I'll make another one just so you can see it. I'll use button five, which in this case is gear five. So if I go into here, go into advanced. Now, if you don't have anything here, it'll ask you, you know, before you open this up, please use a key. You can change this once you're in here, but I know that my use key is E, so I'll click E and then I'll hit advanced. And now I can get into the assignments. So in here, E is the use button. So it's gonna hold that down. And again, right, I want it to use the down key. So I can just click that and then click whatever I want on my keyboard and it'll pop in. So E down, it'll do E and then down. So it's just like a quick little, uh, it's like a quick little macro that you can do to use kind of longer keyboard shortcuts for a game or whatever else you're doing. Uh, you can do it right here. And then you can change the timing of it down here in the lower right. You can change that from minutes, seconds, milliseconds, all that type of stuff. So in this case, I just wanted it to be pretty quick. It just bops it in and then we're done. So now I have everything all set up to the way that I want it to be done. So once you have your stuff set up, you can actually save this profile so you don't have to keep redoing it every single time that you load this program up. And to save a profile, go to whatever controller you want. And then over on the top right, you'll see this button that says save as. Click that, go to wherever you want, name it whatever you want, and then hit save. Then to load it, you can just simply hit load and then you can find all of your different loads. And in here you can see like I have a Minecraft one or like Undertale, stuff like that. So you can do it all right from inside of here. And then you have quick selectable profiles that you can load onto anything, not even just this, like just a standard controller. This is a bonus tip. If you don't have, you know, all this type of stuff, that's fine. If you just have like a wheel that only has a couple buttons, here's how you can actually use like layer maps so that you can use a button as like a toggle to go between different layer maps to use more actions on the same buttons. So it like lets you like remap things. Down on the bottom here, you see how it says sets? You can do set one through eight, and then it's all down here as well. You can actually select between these, and these are all for the same device. And if I go to like set two, you can see that all of this stuff is back again with nothing being selected. There's nothing actually here until I go back to set one and I have all my main stuff. Well, I'm gonna use one of my unmapped keys, which is button 11 here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click this, click any type of random thing you want it to be, because this is one of the weird things, like you can't just go into advanced and make it what you wanna do. So I'm just gonna call it space for a second, then go into advanced and go down here to set selector, where it says disabled, go ahead and make this, select set two while held. So when I only, when I hold that button down, it'll go to set two and then remap everything to whatever set two has. And then as soon as I let go of the button, it goes back to set one. So I'm gonna use that for right now, just to show you this. So I'm gonna go set two while held. I'm going to close this out. So now it's no longer the space. It's now this one. So if I use that button, so as I hold down button 11, you can see here that it suddenly goes into the second set. And now I have everything reconfigurable again to have even more control. So you can use this as like a, a quick hotkey switch to open up a whole new layer map for yourself. Well, what if I don't want to hold that down, right? So, okay, well, let's go back to the advanced again, go back to set selector, and then let's call it a, uh, Let's do a select set two way. So I'll go ahead and click that. Now, when I click that button, it just goes to set two and it doesn't go back. 
So if I hit it again, it'll go back again. Now be careful with this one. So you see how it still has a space button in there. Now that we've already gone into the advanced settings, you can actually just go up here and click none. Kind of a weird thing about this particular program, but it, it, it's a quick and easy way for you to just get rid of that. So now that'll still act as your set selector, but you don't have another button that's mapped to it there. And then the one way, that you saw that was on there, that just simply sends you the set two and then it doesn't let you go back to set one. So I'd be careful with the one ways, but you can set however many of these that you would like to do. So uh, have fun with this, play around with it. You can just put you can put a lot of functions on the same keyboard uh, by using sets. Now that all of Anti Micro X is done, let's go ahead and open up the HID Hide because there's a specific reason why I had you get that program. So the application of HID Hide will look a lot like this, except you'll have nothing inside of this application's uh, folder here. What HID Hide does is it takes all of your HID devices. So in this case, controllers, right? So an Xbox controller, PlayStation controller, my steering wheel, all of my sim rig cockpit stuff here. It takes all of that stuff and it hides it from all other applications on my computer so that none of my applications, nothing, no game, no nothing can see these devices unless you pass it through to it. So the problem with using the wheels as is or another controller, right, is, is if I remap it to a keyboard, the game's gonna recognize that you are playing with a controller, but you're also playing with a keyboard. And so like if you mapped your A button, which is typically like jump in a lot of games, and you made that like run in the actual game, your character will like do this weird run jump thing all the time. So to keep the game or other applications from seeing a controller being used and only seeing this new keyboard thing that you have set up, you need to use HID hide to hide these devices. What we're gonna wanna do though is make sure that Anti Micro X can still see this stuff. Otherwise, if I don't have Anti Micro X in here, Anti Micro can't see these devices anymore and it'll just get rid of all of them. So what we're gonna do is go down to this little plus button here and then navigate to where you have Anti Micro X installed, which in my case is gonna be in my C drive, program files, and then right here, Anti Micro X, go to the bin folder. And then right here, you can see Anti Micro X.exe. That, that is the executable that runs every time the Anti Micro X runs. That is what you're gonna wanna click on, not the uninstall one. You have to make sure that it is the .exe file that you are using to run the Anti Micro X. So in this case, it is in my C drive, program files, Anti Micro X, bin and then this .exe file. So once you click that, hit open and it'll load it up in here, just as you see right here in mine, I have, it's just my C drive, program files, anti micro x bin, anti micro x.exe. Then in this case, I also have the HID hide client. That might be there by default, but you might have to add that in as well. Just letting you know. Now, once that's done, go over to devices. And in here, you should see every type of controller that you have connected to your PC. So if I grab another controller here and I go ahead and turn on my Xbox controller that's hooked up to this PC, you can see that it pops up in there controller Xbox one for controller and it's not currently selected which means that this is not being hidden by anything this can still be seen by all applications that's because everything else already has the check mark to it so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back off and eventually we'll see that disappear but what you're gonna want to do is find all of your different devices that's here now in my case they're the only controllers I have hooked up to the PC other than the Xbox one which I know is over there and it's off I don't need to click this one but you're gonna want to make sure that they all have check marks to it and then down below here you'll have enable device hiding and that's what you want to click as soon as you click that anything else that was using these can no longer the whatever games anything else that isn't passed through to the applications can no longer find these devices and this was the one problem that i was having all the time and this is what solved uh all these double input things so you're gonna wanna go ahead and click enable device hiding. Now here you can see that I have gaming devices only turned on. If I have this turned off, you can see like I have a Cam Link 4K. I have uh, my like keyboard and mouse and stuff. You could also hide these devices too. I have the gaming devices only clicked on just so I can see specifically just my gaming devices. And then you can filter out disconnected if you want. I don't need to, so I'm just gonna leave it all hooked up like this. Now this is everything you needed to do in order to be able to play Elden Ring or any of your favorite games with whatever type of controller setup that you want to do. So let's go ahead and test it out. So here we are inside of Elden Ring and let's see if it all works. So if I go to the right, I go to the right. If I go to the left, I go to the left. Straight, back, and then I should have back step if I just click that or I should be able to sprint and dodge roll. Perfect. Okay, so now I have this. I should have jump on a key. Yep. Uh, let's go find somebody real quick to see if I can uh, lock on to them because I, I mapped my lock on to my handbrake here. So let's see. Uh, let's see if I can lock on to anybody. Hello. Oh, I sure can get wrecked. You know, 
you can you can at me all you want for the fact that I'm gonna use a, a mage build for this. Yeah, that's right. Oh, perfect. I didn't mean to. There we go. So now, I mean, come on, come on. I meant to backstep. Hello. <laughs> You can tell this is gonna take some time to get used to. I'll, I'll put it at that. So let's double check here, right? So I can sprint, I can do everything in here. I should be able to call my horse with that little macro that we set up on my uh, my shifter here. So if I go down into reverse or R for ride, I call my horse up and immediately I'm ready to roll. So from here, I can still drink my Estus flask. God, I've played too much Dark Souls 3. Flask of Crimson Tears, uh, I can still drink that. I can block if I had my shield out. I have a lot of stuff that's already set up to this that if I want to sprint, all I have to do is press in my clutch pedal. And then from here, I can jump. I can do all the stuff that I would normally do. But we also mapped those mouse movement things to allow for some panning. So if I click those two buttons, you can see here that I'm able to pan my camera around in a nice smooth fashion in order to be able to still be able to see things, especially if you're not locked on to something. Or if I turn all the way around and I want to click quick lock on to somebody, right? I can just grab my handbrake or whatever you've used as your Q key or your lock on, or I can just simply use it to snap my camera forward like I can here. So now I have everything be able to set up, but I also have on my shifter, right? I can move my camera down and I can move my camera up. So this way here, I have essentially everything I would normally be doing with a controller or a keyboard. I can now do here. It's just gonna take you some time to get used to the fact that uh, you're using something very different all of a sudden. Uh, like right there, right? I missed because I need to be going forward instead of this way. So now we have the ability to play any game that you want to. You don't get any double stuff and if you want to get off your horse just slap into ride and once again we're back on foot sprinting around like a pleb and a controller. So now don't forget your safety gear. Get out there and have fun, you maidenless peep. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care. Love ya. Bye. Let's do this thing. So fast. I am speed.